Hello, welcome to the IT Net Tech Update for this week. This month we're discussing remote working and how to get the best results from your remote working employees. Uh, during our discussions, you may hear us reference zero trust networking. So what is zero trust? Why is it so crucial to remote working? Uh, stay tuned to find out. Hello, I'm Michael Kinnett, CEO and founder of Eternal Networks. Every Friday at one o'clock on our Facebook, Twitter, and my personal LinkedIn, we discuss the latest tech and cyberspace news that might affect your business. At the end of the live session, I'll also be answering questions from the audience. If you have any tech, cybersecurity related questions, get them ready. I'll be taking some time at the end. Uh, as, far as, as far as what's in the news, um, there's a new type of attack uh, that hackers and criminals are using to get past MFA or multi-factor authentication. I thought this was really interesting. What they've done is they've kind of looked at how people behave and figured out how they can trick them into, into doing what they want and giving them access. And so using this new technique they call MFA fatigue, hackers have been able to breach Uber, Microsoft, and Cisco, right? Some of the big tech companies uh, in the world. So in an MFA fatigue attack, a hacker will make multiple attempts to log into a given user account and they, they have to, they have to have leaked credentials or hacked credentials. So they have to know the login for that user, right? They can't just, they can't just use this method if they don't have that, but they have ways of getting those right through the dark web and other stuff through, through other breaches. So once they have that and they can, they can log in MFA has been the saving grace for many people, right? Because, it sends that MFA code to the user's phone or email or text or whatever, right? And without that, the hackers can't get in. Well, now, now they have a way of, of tricking the users to do this, right? So they do multiple attempts to log in, which trigger this multi-factor notification, right? So it sends an alert to someone's phone, right? So it just sends an endless stream of these sign and approval requests to the user's device. So uh, along with blowing up their phone, essentially with all these notifications, uh, hackers also send emails to the user, which they pretend to be their IT department or IT support in an attempt to convince them that they need to approve these requests. And the intention is that the victim finally approves the request out of out of frustration, right? They're, they're, they're fed up with all these notifications. They just want it to stop. Or they're convinced by the emails that their tech department and their tech team it wants them to approve it. And so they do. And that's how these criminals are getting access to these accounts. By, by going through the MFA. So just be aware, if you start seeing lots of, of MFA requests coming through on your device, don't approve them. Uh, reach out to your ID department. Don't trust any emails or notifications that come in. Just, just be very wary, right? I, I would imagine with the success that these criminals have had, you're gonna see more and more of those type of attacks coming in the future. Uh, so just, just be wary. All right. Now to our main conversation here. What is zero trust networking? It's, it's a topic that we've mentioned previously. I think I, I've done a, a previous video last, might've been last year on our uh, on our YouTube channel about it. Um, but we, we basically, you know, like, what is zero trust, right? It's a, bit, it's a big hot topic right now. A lot of people are talking about it in, in the tech space. But what is it? How does it work? And why should you as a business owner or, or manager or leader within your organization, why should you care about it? So I'll kind of start with where Zero Trust came from, right? So in the tech space, if you had a user that's working remotely, you'd have to give them VPN access, right? And even once somebody's in the network, what do you give them access to? It's very difficult to narrow down what they could access. It was usually, traditionally, you gave them access and they had full access to everything on the network. So if there's a printer on the network, they can see the printer. If there's a network share, they still have to have login credentials to the network share, but they can at least see the share on the network, the server that's hosting it, the other computers, right? They, they can kind of see the entire network that they're connected to. And what this did is it led to um, tech departments setting up multiple networks, right? So you have a network to manage the network, you have a network to manage this, you have a server network, you have an end user network, a guest network, and all these separate networks. And then they had to manage all these complicated firewall and traffic routing rules to allow 
devices to have access to other devices and other systems and other networks, et cetera. It got very complicated. Um, in addition, it was, you know, how are you verifying that who's, who's there on the network is who should be on the network? Uh, the old method, if you plugged into the network, boom, you're on the network, that's it. Well, Zero Trust changed that, right? So it, it, it's a, a method of increasing security um, over the traditional model to secure the network and the company assets. And the, the idea behind it, uh, Zero Trust, is you know instead of the old method where it's you give them full trust, right? They plug in, boom, full trust on the network. Now you plug in, you get zero trust until you've confirmed who you are, and then it uses the least privileged model to only give access to what that user or system needs, rather than access to everything on that network. Um, one of the benefits to remote work is it replaces VPN access, right? So now instead of a VPN connection um, with, with really anybody with a VPN client and a username and password can now get in, it replaces that with this zero trust network agent. Right, where that this agent now verifies one, the device that you're connecting from, and two, the user that's using it to connect. And then it seamlessly just connects, connects in. And so it simplifies it for the remote user and it greatly simplifies it once it's configured for the support team, right? It, it allows them the ability to get permissions to access assets in a much, much more granular method without a lot of the complexity uh, that the old model had. So it, it also, it works through cloud-based identity providers and single sign-on solutions, similar to Microsoft 365, Google Workplace, Okta. There's a bunch of them out there now. Um, even a lot of the password managers are starting to get into to providing this. So it, it, the Zero Trust integrates with those to verify the identity of the user. And what it does is it passes that key information. We talked about single sign-on before, where it passes that, that key information from from the identity provider, from, from Microsoft 365 as an example, it securely sends that authentication code over to this other application, in this case, the Zero Trust, saying, yes, this is who it is. They've already verified who they are with their username, password, and multi-factor authentication. And so it's a way of, of making it more seamless across multiple platforms, multiple applications, and Zero Trust is, is one of those um, to verify the user before giving them access. Uh, so some of the key advantages of, of Zero Trust, as I as I meant to, mentioned here, access is restricted, even among trusted users, right? So they can't go laterally within the network and see everything, right? They're, they're restricted to only what's within their little core infrastructure that they're given access to. Um, the other thing is hybrid networks have better support, right? If you have networks in multiple locations, you have remote, in office and all this stuff, it's just it's just easier and more seamless once they're all tied together through the Zero Trust uh, platform. Uh, security management is more consistent, it's more tight, and it's a lot more controlled across all of the technology infrastructure of the organization. And it, it also removes unnecessary functions for users. Uh, so anything that they don't need to access, they don't have access to anymore. So it simplifies some of that as well. Um, it also makes, as I, as I mentioned a couple of times, makes remote workers seamless access, right? It's a lot less complicated than having to do a, a VPN connection and logging in and all those things because the Zero Trust just seamlessly does the same things. So, you know, that's what Zero Trust is, some of the benefits of it. There's a lot more to it. Um, there's, I mean, if you're really applying Zero Trust across your entire network infrastructure, I could probably talk about all the ins and outs of it uh, for a lot longer, but I won't bore you. It's Friday afternoon. I'm sure most of us are counting down the time till the weekend. So just the last thing I wanna point out, you know, who is Zero Trust meant for? Really, it's meant for any small business all the way up to the enterprise, right? It's not it's not geared for the big boys only. It's really geared for anyone, especially those that have remote workers. Um, so that's Zero Trust. If you have any questions about it, please let me know. Um, I'd love to answer any questions, either direct message or in the, the Q&A we're gonna have here in a few minutes. Uh, which before I, I get to that, I do want to remind you, we do have a webinar, monthly webinar coming up next week. And we're going to be talking about the remote in-office hybrid, right? What's What works best for your company? It's going to be September 29th at 1 p.m. And, you know, the last two years, if, a lot's changed, right? I mean, COVID, everything, almost overnight, we went to full-scale remote working for most organizations, um, still having to do the same 
the same amount of work, right? And find a way to keep data, resources, assets, et cetera, safe. Uh, so remote working, you know, was a big part of that. And it's probably here to stay, right? There's some organizations that are trying to transition back to in-office, but at, at some point it's, it's here, right? Um, so we're gonna be talking about how best, how can your company best utilize um, you know, the hybrid environment, remote work. We're gonna talk not only about the technology, we're gonna talk about um, HR, right? Uh, personnel issues. How do, how do you know when a user, when an employee is, is gonna be a good hire for remote working? Um, what are some of the problems that you're gonna run into, right? We're gonna, we're gonna have a panel of a couple different people. One of them's been, he's been doing remote work since 2001, right? So this isn't anything new to him. Um, we're gonna have, you know, these two, these panelists, we're gonna come, we're gonna have open conversations, we're gonna answer any questions and kind of point out some of the pitfalls of remote working and how to avoid them. So uh, I'll post in the comments below a link to register. Hope to see you on there. Um, let's see, let me just pull up here and see if there's any questions that have come through. Um, I don't see anything live right now. So uh, that being said, if you do have any questions, you know, if you're watching this after the fact, um, message me, right? Direct message me, send me a tweet, uh, post on LinkedIn, Facebook, send me an email if you if you have my contact information. I'd love to answer any of your questions um, through those direct messages. Hope you have a wonderful weekend and hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you.